Hello, it's very good to have you with us at this hour. I'm Daniel Che, here to provide you with the latest. From Seoul to Busan, the authorities on Sunday issued a virtually nationwide heat wave warning once again, with the mercury rising all the way to 35 degrees in some parts of the country. There are people hitting the beaches and hiking in the safety of leafy shade of the nation's mountains and valleys. Now, seven of the country's top beaches, including Haeundae in Busan, saw a total of around 2 million visitors on Saturday alone. Water parks like Caribbean Bay just south of Seoul were also packed with those seeking refuge from the scorching weather. The highways, meanwhile, saw bumper to bumper traffic over the weekend as vacationers headed out to various locations lured by fantastic events and festivals. Korea Expressway Corporation reported more than 4.3 million cars on the road on Sunday, a 10 percent hike from the usual numbers. Whether on the road or on vacation or at home, Ministry of Public Safety and Security advised Koreans to stay hydrated and avoid prolonged outdoor activities. President Bakane is slated to return home from her official vacation on Monday after a week away. Pundits say it's highly likely she will make important changes to her cabinet, since that's been the routine following her vacation in each of the past three years. Kim jong soo looks into the possible shakeup to come. Every year since 2013, when President Park Geun-hye returned from her first official vacation, she has authorized important changes to her chung de staff or to her cabinet. Now political pundits say the same could happen this coming week. One official facing possible replacement is President Park's senior secretary for civil affairs, Wu byung woo who is currently under a month-long special presidential investigation for suspected bribe-taking. Since he took his current position last year, Secretary Wu allegedly accepted bribes in exchange for playing an important role in the promotion of Qin Gyeong Jun to the position of a vice minister level senior prosecutor. Jin himself is currently charged with receiving bribes worth some $800,000 from Kim Jong Ju, founder of game company Nexon. The irony is that Secretary Wu, who is considered an important advisor in the cabinet appointment process, is now under investigation himself. However, Secretary Wu may not be replaced after all. President Park appears to have confidence in his abilities as a cabinet member, as she trusted him to oversee the recent nomination process of Yi Char Sung to be Korea's next chief of police. Also on President Park's to-do list in early August is working on an effective resolution of the controversy in Songju County over deploying the THAAD missile defense system there. It is expected that during Tuesday's cabinet meeting, she will re-emphasize that strategic value for national security. She will also likely address the controversy regarding the traditional special pardon of prisoners on Korea's upcoming Liberation Day holiday, amid claims that the list is heavily prejudiced towards high-ranking politicians and businessmen. Kim Jong-soo, Arirang News. Korea's two main political parties are gearing up for their national conventions next month as the nomination process for the leadership contest is in full swing. From speeches to meetings with delegates and potential voters, Hwang ho -jun has more on what's turning up the heat in the domestic political arena. With less than two weeks until its national convention, candidates to lead South Korea's ruling Saenuri Party gave speeches on Sunday to a party gathering in Taewon, Gyeongsangnam-do province. Five candidates are currently in the race to become the party's chairman. And as a first official platform for them to each make their best impression on the party members and delegates, it was a war of nerves. The southeastern region of Korea is the traditional home turf of the Senuri party and can have a major impact on a candidate's chances. The party gathering and speeches will continue for the next 10 days. The main opposition party, the Minja Party of Korea, still has more than a month to go until its convention, which will be held on the 27th of next month. The party will narrow down the candidates for its leadership from four to three in a vote this coming Friday. So competition is already in full gear to win over party delegates, especially in the metropolitan area of Seoul, which is considered the Minja Party's most favorable constituency. The minor opposition People's Party, on the other hand, is still trying to overcome a corruption scandal within its ranks. Unlike its two rivals, the People's Party is expected to keep its interim leadership in place until it holds its own national convention early next year. Hwang Woo-jun, 
Arirang News. After deporting North Korean workers, Malta has gone one step further and decided to stop issuing work visas for workers from the regime. Valeda is not alone. Singapore, one of the few countries allowing North Koreans visa-free access, has also decided no more. The city, state's Immigration and Checkpoints Authority said on Saturday that visitors from the Hermit Kingdom will need a visa to enter Singapore from October 1st onwards. The move is seen as Singapore's implementation of UN Security Council Resolution 2270, the strong sanctions against the North passed in March. Seoul's Foreign Minister Yoon Myung says that these are clear signs countries around the world are taking steps to stop cash flow into the communist state's nuclear and missile programs, as well as Pyongyang's continued human rights abuse of its workers. The South Korean government launched a new foundation funded by Japan to support the survivors of Japan's wartime sexual slavery on Thursday. And now we're learning the Japanese government does not consider its funding of the center as reparations for its crimes. According to Kyoto News, Japanese government sources argue Japan does not have any legal responsibility to compensate for the damages it incurred during colonial rule. The sources cite the basic treaty signed in 1965 by both Korea and Japan that normalized diplomatic relations. Kyoto News reports Japan hopes to formalize this understanding with Korea in a diplomatic meeting next month. Despite the widely held views among Koreans and many countries around the world that Japan should formally apologize and provide reparations, Tokyo avoided accepting such responsibility. The two countries agreed to create the new center called the Reconciliation and Healing Foundation last December. Oxy finalized its plans to compensate those who were hurt or killed by its toxic humidifier disinfectant and will begin receiving applications for compensations on Monday. According to the UK-based firm on Sunday, up to $315,000 will be provided to the families of those categorized by the government investigation as classes 1 or 2, that is, adults most likely killed by exposure to the said product. Record Van Kieser will provide $896,000 for infants and children. However, the compensation package is nearly identical to the one Oxy presented last month, save for one additional compensation of $45,000 if there is more than one victim in the same household. It does not address demands for compensation for victims in categories 3 and 4 whose suffering was deemed less directly connected to the humidifier sterilizer. Korea's main gateway, Incheon International Airport, is expected to set a new record for passengers in a single day, breaking its previous record in set just a week ago. On Sunday, the number of passengers flying in or out of the airport was set to surpass the 200,000 mark. In another big landmark, the airport has also announced as of Sunday, a total of half a billion air travelers have passed through the facility since it opened in 2001. That means the entire Korean population, which is nearly 50 million, could have used the airport 10 times during that period. Incheon hit the 400 million mark back in 2014 and last year tallied another 50 million. In the world, there are only eight airports, including London Heathrow and Dubai, that can handle that level of traffic. Officials said they expect the addition of a second passenger terminal in 2017 will enable Incheon to take 72 million passengers a year. Starting Monday, South Korea's main stock market will extend the trading by half an hour. The Korea exchange set opening time will remain the same, but the regular session for the stock and gold markets will close 30 minutes later at 3.30 p.m. Korea time. Derivatives trading will end at 3.45 instead of the current 3.15. The extension is expected to lead to a 5 to 6 percent increase in transactions. But the Korea exchange decided to cut 30 minutes from after-hours trading, which will run from 3.40 to 6 p.m. This will be the first time trading hours have been changed since the year 2000 when the market operator eliminated the lunch hour break. More gun violence in the United States. One person was killed and four others injured in shooting incidents in Austin, Texas, Sunday morning local time. The Austin police described them as separate shootings within the same area. According to CNN, of the four injured, two women and one man are hospitalized, but the fourth person declined medical treatment. It's unclear whether the shooter has been apprehended. Sunday's shooting in Texas occurred less than a day after three recent high school graduates were killed while at a house party in suburban Seattle, Washington. A breakthrough study on diabetes has advanced a current knowledge about the genetic factors that directly contribute to the condition. According to our Kim Yo-sung, it's expected to help greatly in the development of personalized prevention and treatment options.
An international team of researchers has identified 16 specific genes that directly increase the risk for type 2 diabetes and that may now serve as potential drug targets. The study by over 300 scientists from 22 countries, including Korea, analyzed the genetic makeup of more than 120,000 people from Europe, Asia, Africa, and the Americas. The risk genes were similar for the five studied races, but two specific genes only occurred in Asians. This part of the study was based on data from about 4,000 Asians, and the researchers plan to further study the race for any additional risk genes. The study provides clues for designing suitable treatment methods and drugs according to a patient's gene information. We expect the study to contribute to personalized diabetes treatment and early invention with new drugs. The study was published on July 11th in the scientific journal Nature. Kim hye Arirang News. Now a quick look at the weather before we go. It's another scorcher of a week in Korea. Cloudy skies in most parts on Monday with rain in the forecast for inland areas in the evening. Seoul, Daejeon and Cheongju will all start the day at 25. Then the mercury shoots up all the way to 32 in all three cities. And now let's check out the weather conditions in your neck of the woods and around the world. That's all we have for you at this hour. Hope the transition to a new work week is smooth for you. Thank you for watching.